शुक्लांबरधर विष्णु शशिवर्ण चतुर्भुज प्रसन्न वनम ध्यानोपात सरस्वती नमस्तुभ्यं वरधे कामिणी विद्यारंभम क्या मे सदा ये नक्षर सधिगम्य महेशरा कृत्न व्याकरण प्रोक्त तस्म पानी नम वाक्यकारुचि भाष्यकार पतंजलि पानी सूत्रकार प्रणथस्मी मुनेय वागर्थाव संपृक्त वागर्थ प्रतिपत जगत पिता वंदे पार्वती परमेशर ओ शाते 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 हरि ओम श्री गुरुभ्यो नम हरि ओम ओम आ उन्न ए ओंग आई आउच हाया वारट इति महेश्वराणि सूत्राणि महिंग सो सो यूजुअली से सु ओ जस I want us to try something a little different today. Now this is not traditional, but here's the suo just without the it letters. Okay? This is from americansanskrit.org. <laughs> um the in New Jersey there's American Sanskrit organization. Um and so we'll chant it without the it letters. You can repeat after me, okay? Sa o aha sa o aha um o aha um o aha so it's instead we have su o jas um o chas so it's sa o aha um o aha okay a bhyam bihi a bhyam bihi a bhyam ओहो आम ओहो आम ई ओहो सु ई ओहो सु Now usually when we do suo just we wouldn't do the sambodhana but here it has the sambodhana as well in the sambodhana singular it's often you know like rama ha huh? rama ha is was one one but then rama is sambodhana so it has nothing there sometimes sometimes the sambodhana is the same as the one one so it depends on the, the, the you know it depends on the specific word but sometimes it's just without the visarga that is in one one So how we would do this is we 
oh, aha, oh, aha, <laughs> instead of <laughs> how do you, you got to give it space. So this, I'm, I'm introducing this now because we know the Suo just, we can also know this. This is this will be maybe a little bit more useful, practical in remembering which is the endings that we use, especially for the consonant ending words. Yep, Harprasadji, the question with this. Uh um, Mahodia, why is that uh, um... The so he is assuming that uh, all these, for example, us it should be it should be us au us. Um, so he is is the author assuming that is it is all halanta uh, shabdas. So. It should be if because the mm -hmm. one three two three usually is us us, and here he's saying aha, aha it becomes a visarga only in, the, in case of a mm. So if we yeah, so if we're just come we're just taking off the yeah we're just taking off the it letters of of the suo just right. So the it letter for just is jakara. So we just have us. Us. Right, so one three us, Correct. and yeah, the sakara always it becomes a visarga, always. Yeah, provided it is a halanta ending word. But even um, so like Rama, right? Rama plus us becomes a Rama. Rama, right? The, the vis um, the, yeah the sakara becomes visarga so uh, uh, sa halant uh, sa halanta no what is what is that uh, okay so if it is sa irrespective of uh, either it is a halanta or a swara it is always a visarga yeah, whether it's consonant or ending or it's vowel ending, yeah, it's it's always going to be visarga. Okay, I thought it was only consonant ending. There's some changes that take place depending on the word, um, but there's no specific rule. But this is the, it always becomes a visarga. So I can put them side by side. So you can see what the it letters are between the two. Okay. And so the reason that the it letters are there is because Panini Muni, when he's writing the sutras, when he's writing the sutras, he'll refer to words using using these uh, using these letters. Um, so I'm trying to think of a so yeah, never mind. Let's just leave that for now. <laughs> I don't want to launch into something else. But Hari Shabda. So Hari he Hari Hariha. So it it's it's a little bit different. It's right. So but this is the template. Right, this is the template and it gets modified. Right, and so we see the template most clearly when it is consonant ending. Halanda. So I think that's what Haraprasadji you were trying to say that we follow this template most clearly when it's halanta. When it's when it's ajanta, ach, you know, it's vowel ending, then there's actually more modifications. So that's why we really memorize the the uh, vowel endings, right? We Ramaha, Harihi, Guruhu, 
Um, so, so those are all those have more modifications from this basic template than the than the consonant ending words do. But still, some of it still applies even in inheritation. <laughs> Okay, let's um, go to our sadhana bodhini. Om Namaskritya Gurum Bhaktya Brahmatmananda Rupinam Sadhana Syopadeshtaram Purve sadhana bodhinim. So this is the new shloka we'll do today. You can repeat after me. Ishwararpana buddhischa. Prasada. Twena bhavana prasada twena bhavana karma kale phala prapto karma kale phala prapto kartavye te yathakramam kartavye te yathakramam so just the context to what we were seeing in our last class, right? That karmeva manushyena, but that very action, if performed well with the attitude of karma yoga, becomes the means for moksha and natu bandhana karakam, not the cause of bondage, okay? So that was the context. So the question might be, karma yoga, Karma yoga ha kaha. What is karma yoga? Right? Because it says if done with karma yoga, then it becomes moksha sya dwaram bhavati. It becomes the, the means for moksha. So we might want to know what is karma yoga. So this next shloka is telling us what is karma yoga. Okay, so just getting the overall meaning before we look in each word, there should be an attitude of offering to the Lord. Ishwararpana buddhi and that of prasada, prasada buddhischa, while doing the action, karma kale, and receiving the results, palaprapto, respectively, yathakramam. Okay, so meaning is clear? Yeah. Okay. So let's, this is, uh, I just changed the word order slightly, but it's not too much different from the original shloka. So we're just going to look at the sentence, Ishwarapana buddhihi. I broke the Sundays, Prasada Dvena Bhavana Cha, Te Karmakale Palaprato Yitakramam Kartavye. Okay. So we don't have a verb here. <laughs> if you see, if you look, scan each word, we don't have a verb here. We have a verb-like word, but we don't have a verb. So we can add asti, we can add bhavati, okay? I'm not going to write that, but we're just knowing that that's implied, okay? That we can add asti or bhavati. Something is. Okay? Um, Does someone want to give the verb like word that you can maybe identify and we're going to we're going to talk about it slightly. But what is a word here that looks like a verb but <laughs> is not a verb. Yeah, if you want to type it in the chat or you can raise your hand and I'll unmute you. Okay, someone saying Arpanam in the chat. Harpasaj has his hand up. Let's see. Oh, you have to unmute yourself, Harpasaj. Kartavye. 
Kartavye. Yeah, that is correct. So how did you think that that might be a this verb-like word? Somehow it feels like that. <laughs> yeah, it feels like that. That's a, that's a good answer. Any part of that word feels like that? Kartavye. Yeah. Yeah, there's a there's a clue in the chat. <laughs> clue. <laughs> kru, kru datu, kru datu. You see this kar, yeah. kar kru, right? Karta comes from all all these words come from kru datu. Yeah. Yeah, kru datu. Kar. So so kru datu, right? It it's it's involved with kartavya. We were seeing that this. Uh, sorry, I have a lot of notes here. We're saying this is what we call a kridanta, kartavye. Okay, this is what we call a kridanta. So I have some more information because I know we were talking about it at the end. So, so technically we start with krit pratye. So we're just talking about the pratye. Okay, the pratye is called krit pratye. And they are added to a datu to make a new pratipadika. This is what we were talking about, this equation, right? Datu plus krit pratyaha is pratipadika. Here we have kridatu plus tavya. Tavya. And kru, then it takes guna and becomes kar. Kru becomes kar and then becomes kar tavya. Okay, that is makes a new pratipadika. We can call this new pratipadika krit anta, kridanta, right? It's krit anta, krit ending. So therefore we call it krit, krit, krit anta or kridanta. Ta becomes da, kridanta. Okay. In other words, nominalization, meaning making of a noun. <laughs> Nominalization, that's a, that's a nice word. The making of a noun of datu is done by suffixing krit pratya or by suffixing krit pratya, datu gets nominalized. Okay, so by adding krit pratya, datu becomes a pratipadika. Pratipadika still needs a supratya to become a noun. Right, it's just that base. There are more than 100 Krit Pratyas. They're found in the Panini Sutras. And the, as we said, the new Pratipadika and the decline form, the Subanta of that Pratipadika, both are called Kridandam. Kridandam. So it's an Upumsaka word, Kridandam. Now, krit pratyas, just like a noun, they can point to a karaka. They can donate, denote a karaka. A karaka, remember we saw there's six karakas, kartru karaka, karma karaka, karana karaka, etc. Right? Sampradana, padane. And then there's no sambande karaka. <laughs> six, for six, there's no karaka. But seventh, we have adhikarane. Adhikarana karaka, right? So we have six of them. It can denote any of those, just like a noun. Or it can denote bhava, just the action itself. So if we say kridatu plus a krit pratya, it can just denote doing, right? Denote the, the meaning of doing. And some can also express some additional sense, okay, some additional sense to it. So we'll see what that means. Um, now, this tavya that we're going to see, sorry, tavya is technically, it's what we call a, a subtype, it's called a kritya, 
Okay, Kritya is a subtype of Krit Pratya. Okay, you don't need to know all of this. I'm just giving you more, but all we need to know is Kridanta. Now there's a, a subtype called Krityas, okay, which give the meaning of Karma. It's Karmani, right? It gives the sense of a Karma, points to a Karma, an object. There's also some that show bhave, but we don't see that. I mean, we do see that, but it's not going to be relevant to us today. The meanings of this, of this will be object which should be done, or which is fit to be done, or which is necessary to be done, or which is possible to be done. Okay, give me any of these meanings. So I'll take questions in a moment. So for example, we have kridatu plus tavya. Okay, Tavya is one of these types of Krit Pratya. Okay, Tavya Pratya gives the Karmani sense. Okay, that's one thing. And second, it gives the sense of something which should be done. Should be done. Okay, that's specific to this Pratya that you have this added sense of should be done. Okay, by the addition of this suffix, kru becomes an anga. You get guna, so it becomes kar. Kar plus tavya becomes kartavya. So something should be done, right? That's the, sense, that's the meaning that we get. Should be, something should be done. It's karmani, meaning the what should be done will be told as first case, karmani pratama to kartavya. Okay, is there still any questions? I know some hands went up and, and down. If you have, a, does anybody have any question? Yeah, Urmilaji, yeah. See, the, is the kr, we are using the kr from the dhatu. So not all uh, Kridanta Padas have Kru as I suppose. So the Kridantas, the Kridanta part is Tavya in this case, correct? Am I right? Yes, yes. So it can be any Dhatu. So for example, Gum, mm. you know, Gachati, right? Gum mm -hmm. Dhatu. Gum plus Tavya becomes yeah. Gantavya. I see. The Makara becomes Nakara because of Sandhi, but Gantavya. So there are like a hundred, uh, Words like tavya, is that what you're saying? <laughs> there is, but there's some some main characters that we'll see. Mm. The main characters we'll see more often, um, but there are quite a quite a lot of them. <laughs> and all of them are karmani kar pratama. Um, no, so just this this subgroup of what we call kritya, uh -huh. this grouping of them have this karmani sense to them. One of the this, this is Tavya. So not all of Kridanta have Karmani sense to it. So for example, um, there's one Krit Pratya called Trich. T-R-I-C-H, Trich. Okay, Trich. Now Trich Pratya gives a sense of Karta, Kartari. So if I have... Um, so, um, we had yeah. so karta, so we can, sorry, it's the word karta. Kridatu plus trich becomes kartri. Okay, kartri. Kartri means the doer of action, right? It's the karta of doing. Or gam plus tri, gantri, the one who goes. So that's a different type of Krit Pratya that has the sense of Kartari. So they can have different senses to them. Is it helpful? Yes. Okay. So. Coming back.
So we have the word kartavye. Okay. Now, why is it now? Okay, so we know kartavya. But how come it now it says kartavye? <laughs> so it's 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 akaranta, right? Akaranta. Now one clue is that we have going along with it is te. Te karta ye. That should be done. Okay. Te can be a few things. It can be sahato te tam to. So it can be one three. Or it can be uh tad te tani. I'll show you. I brought I brought it here for you. Yeah, yeah. Tad te tani tad. Here we go. Tad te tani tad te tani. <laughs> so te can be dual. In Napumsaka, in masculine, it can be plural. One three. Right? Tena ta bhyam taihi. Etc. Right. So here we're talking about karma. So karma is napumsaka linga. So it's actually we're going to be talking about dual here. Dual te. Okay. Those two. Those two kartavye. Kartavye. So it's also napumsaka linga. So akaranta napumsaka linga. Uh, prathama vibhakti dvivachanam, both of these words. So they're going to be in samana dikaran. Those two should be done. What two is because we know if you read the whole sentence, Ishvara Pranabuddhi and Prasad Bhavana, <laughs> those two should be done. So, knowing that context, it would be a little bit more clear. Okay, yeah, let's look. But this is, this is the main part of the sentence. Those two should be done. Which two? Let's look at that. So, Ishwara Pranabuddhi. Prasadatvena bhavana cha. Okay, does anybody want to give the cases for these words? You want to try? Let's, let, we'll take someone new, Harprasadji, so we haven't heard someone's voice. Okay. Sanjeevji? Okay. Each each for our part of Buddhi, that's a one one. One one, correct. Yep. Yeah. Like Harihi. Mm -hmm. I like Harihi. Prasad Tvena. Is it a three one? Yep. Yeah. Three one. Then bhavana. Cha is zero. Bhavana. So if you met a person in bhavana, do you think they're masculine or feminine? Bhavana, ma'am. Feminine. Feminine. So this is a feminine word. Okay, Ganga. So it is a one one. One one, yeah. Like Ganga, yeah, perfect. Okay, so that's perfect. So Ishwara Pranabuddhi. Um you said it's like Hari, right? So Ikaranta. Oh. Ikaranta. Um gender. Pulinga. Yeah, we can say Pulinga. Mm -hmm. yeah. The 
साधत्वेन वत्स्ति साधक जीवित इन भावना ओके, सो ईश्वर पन बुद्धि ही द मीनिंग एटीट्यूड विद द एटीट्यूड या द एटीट्यूड या हियर इज एटीट्यूड ऑफ अर्पणा ऑफरिंग टू ईश्वर of offering to ishwara yeah the attitude of offering to ishwara and then bhavana is the same as buddhi here here so it's attitude attitude of receiving uh, as prasada from uh, as prasada yeah that's perfect so there's attitude of offering to the lord and attitude of prasada perfect thank you Okay, so they're all first case. So this is this is a first case. Okay, you can connect it to yeah. So Ishwar Brahma Buddhi Prasad Tuena Bhavana Cha. Okay, so here Ishwar Brahma Buddhi is a samasa Prasad Tuena Bhavana is separated, but you can even make a samasa if you wanted to. It would be Prasad Bhavana, like Ishwar Brahma Buddhi. You can have Prasad Bhavana, but they made it into just two separate words. Now it's saying, "te." Te refers to which two? Ishwar Parna Buddhihi and Prasada Tuena Bhavana. The Bhavana Prasada Tuena of the the attitude of Prasada, attitude in the form of Prasada. Now this this th this third case is, is is a funny third case. Okay, this is what we call a. Uh, इत्थम भूते तृतीया, ओके इत्थम भूते तृतीया, इत्थम भूते सो इत्थम महाप्राणथकार भूतम महाप्राण भूप, इत्थम भूते is gives the sense of in the form of, in the form of. So sometimes we see this itam bhute tritiya. It's in the form of something. So the bhavana, the attitude, in the form of prasadatva. Prasad. Yeah. So what is the difference between prasad versus prasadatva? The twa gives that abstract noun sense. Now, prasada, there's no good English translation. Um, yeah, so it's like uh, I don't even know how to translate properly, but it's like divine grace would be prasada, and divine graciousness, graciousness would be prasada twa. <laughs> it's the state of of grace state of grace would be graciousness so here prasada prasada would be grace prasada tova would be graciousness and then tritiya vibhakti so prasada dvena okay so those two kartavye should be done now we're running out of time so we'll see the rest in the next class but karma kale and phala prapto which case is this karma kale kale yeah fingers are lots of fingers you need yeah seventh case 
So karma kala, this is like akaranta um, punlinga rama shabdavat, like rama shabda. So karma kala at the time of karma, phala prapto. This is phala prapti ikaranta saptami vibhakti ekavachanam like haro hari haro haro would be seventh case singular. So they should be done karma kale at the time of karma and kartavye phala prapto at the prapti when receiving the phala, the result. Yathakramam. Yathakramam is respectively. This is an avyaya word. It's a special, we're going to look at this word in our next class. It's a special type of um, samasa, which gives avyaya. And it means, yathakramam means respectively. So it should be done, right? Ishwarpana buddhi should be done karma kale at the time of doing the action. Prasada bhavana palaprapto when receiving the result. So respectively, they have to go with the right thing. Okay. Prapti, prapto is not a verb, but it's a also kritanta. Apda. It's another, it's another uh, kritanta. We have apdatu, pra upasarga, ap, then, and we'll, we'll, we'll see this also in the next class. So you'll see, now you'll start seeing a lot of kritanta where you see these, these, these words. Okay, let's just chant this and then we'll finish. Ishwararpana buddhischa prasadatvena bhavana karma kale phala prapto kartavyete yathakramam. So we'll pick up here. So there's some questions about. Uh, prapti and arpana, we can talk about those in the next class. Yeah. And we'll also see a dakrama.